there are many different foot and toe injuries that are associated with rock climbing. Whether it's pressure marks, subungal hematomas, splinter hemorrhages, cuts and bruises to the toes, dystrophic and infected nails, Haglund deformities, dorsal calluses, hallux valgus, as well as claw toe, these are just a few of the many types of foot as well as toe injuries that climbers may have. Now the primary mechanism of almost all of these injuries is shoe fit. Now climbers, particularly those of higher ability, climb with shoes that are smaller than their feet. In the long term, using tight climbing shoes and ones that adhere closely to the toes can lead to the development of various forms of these deformities. If we take a look at the screen here, we can see several different deformities of the foot and ankle, as well as the toes. We see in climber one, a dorsal callus over the great toe, a deformed hallux IP joint, and a hallux valgus position. Additionally, we see dystrophic nails. In climber two, we see a dorsal callus over the great toe, dorsal calluses over the second to fifth digit, and deformed lateral toes, and a Haglund's deformity with severe callusing. In climber three, over the great toe, we see a dorsal callus, as well as a deformed hallux IP joint, and, a, and dorsal calluses and deformed lateral toes in the second through fourth digits. These images were adapted from a study by McHenry and colleagues that looked in depth at the different foot, ankle, as well as toe deformities in rock climbers. So let's take a look at another study. This was a study by Schoffel and colleagues. They had a climber stand in an x-ray machine and they x-rayed their foot without a climbing shoe. And then they took an x-ray of several views of their foot with the climbing shoe on. Let's take a look. Here you can see in image A, the climber is barefoot while standing. In image B, the same climber is in a climbing shoe. You can notice the clawed toes and the hallux valgus. And in image C, the lateral view, you can see a supinated foot with clawed toes. So these clawed toes, this hallux valgus, this supinated foot is common with rock climbers, especially climbers that are wearing tight fitting shoes. So Schoffel and colleagues in this study took it one step further. They showed that wearing a climbing shoe and x-raying a foot in that shoe that we saw hallux valgus, we saw a supinated foot, as well as these claw toes, and they were able to calculate the degrees of deformity. So the hallux valgus angle increases 14 degrees when barefoot to 21 degrees when placed in a climbing shoe. And 53% of the longtime high-level climbers that were used in this study had a hallux valgus, and 20% of them had it bilaterally or on both sides. So if you wanna compare these statistics 53% of the climbers in this study had a hallux valgus. Only 4.5% of the general population has it. And when a climber's in a climbing shoe, their hallux valgus may increase up to seven degrees. So it's important to know that hallux valgus is more likely to occur in higher level rock climbers and also higher level climbers wearing small shoes. And that we need to be aware of our foot care as well as our shoe selection as rock climbers to be able to prevent or to mitigate some of these types of injuries and deformities of the foot. In its popular culture, it's normally okay for our feet to hurt when we climb, but there's a tightrope, a fine balance between having a shoe that's too small and that's irritating or compressing our feet and leading to some long-term damage and having a shoe that's the perfect fit, just enough to allow us to climb effectively and efficiently. So here is some additional research related to foot injuries and rock climbers. In a study by Killian and colleagues, they noted that the majority of climbing foot injuries resulted from wearing climbing shoes that were unnaturally shaped or were too small. And the shoe size reduction forces the foot to conform in the shoe and changes the biomechanical position of the foot within the shoe. The foot shortens through supination and contraction of the digits. So this was a further confirmation of the Schoffel study. Understanding that small, tight-fitting climbing shoes cause that supination of the foot as well as the contraction of the digits. Well, what else does research tell us? In a study by Schoffel and colleagues, 
they identify that high ability climbers experienced more foot deformities and injuries compared to climbers of lower ability. And they liken this due to the common practice of wearing climbing shoes that were sized smaller than normal street shoes. So we get it. We understand that small, tight-fitting climbing shoes generate pain and can cause some deformity in the toes. But how small is too small? What do we know about that research? In another study by Schoeffel and colleagues, they identified that high-ability climbers had an average shoe size difference between normal shoes and climbing shoes of 2.3 EU or 1.7 US. And average climbers had a difference of about 1 to 2 EU or 1 to 1.5 US. And these sizes were based on the manufacturer sizing of the shoes. Now there's another study that was interesting that looked into shoe fit with rock climbers. And this was a questionnaire. This was a cross-sectional study by McHenry and colleagues that looked at 56 climbers with a mean of 10 years of climbing experience. And they surveyed them for their activity and footwear. In this study, they showed that ill-fitting and excessively tight footwear was found in 55 out of the 56 climbers. And foot pain during normal activity was commonplace in 91% of the climbers. A mean size reduction of almost four US shoe sizes was found between the climber street shoes and their climbing footwear. And now this is a little different than other studies, but we need to remember how they measured this difference. They actually measured the footwear using a calibrated foot shoe ruler rather than relying on the manufacturer sizing. And in this study, they found an association of climbers who had higher abilities, they also had tighter fitting shoes. So climbing performance needs to be balanced with foot health. And it's important to understand that a tight fitting climbing shoe can aid in performance, but it can also lead to some foot and toe deformities. So it's a perfect balance of finding the right size fit.